Well, I just want to say thank you for being here. Easter is a, a time that sometimes can get combined into to one moment. There are three very important elements that we want to recognize together, and Good Friday is the first of those moments. Good Friday represents the willingness of Jesus to go to the cross. And so as his followers, it must represent the willingness to look at the cross and not look away. That's our purpose tonight is we're, we're together. We're going to look at the cross and not look away. And it's in that, that determination not to look away that we are transformed. So we have Good Friday, and then we have the, the wonder of, of the waiting and, and this in-between. And we all can identify with that. We all can identify with the, the in-between of saying, God, I know your promises, and I don't see it today. It's amazing to me that, that the Father set this in, in motion in a way that we would be able to identify and that, that he didn't exempt himself from the waiting. So the waiting is so important. It's so important that we bring that in and we, we take hold of that. And then we celebrate the resurrection. My purpose tonight is to be faithful to the gaze of the cross and to lead us in not looking away. So would you join me in standing? I'm going to read the words of Jesus from John chapter 3. This is verse 14 of John chapter 3. Jesus says this, he says, As Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. Let's bring our hearts to the Lord. Tonight, God, we look to you. Jesus, again, we look to you as the bronze serpent was lifted up in the wilderness. We look to you on the cross. Holy Spirit, would you reveal Jesus as you alone can? We worship you. We praise you. We welcome you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I love that we, we have uh, many of the, the kids are in, in with us. It's wonderful to have you here. I know that we have a, an egg hunt after service. You can welcome them. Go ahead. People start clapping. You can do that. So, so kids, I just want to tell you, it's supposed to be a glow-in-the-dark uh, Easter egg hunt, so that means I have to preach until about 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. I'm just going <laughs> to, somebody said, wait till 8 o'clock. <laughs> I heard that. Jesus is talking to, to a man named Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a secret disciple. He was afraid to meet with Jesus in the daytime, and so they met at night. And it's in this conversation that, that Jesus brings this statement to Nicodemus, and he says, as the Son of Man... Or that the Son of Man will be lifted up the same way that, that Moses lifted up the bronze serpent in the wilderness. And so I want to go back to this account because the Lord wants us to, to see and to, to have Jesus revealed in the looking at the cross. And what happens, what transformation happens in, in, in our lives and our hearts when we choose to look and not turn our gaze, not be distracted, but continue to gaze at the cross. Numbers chapter 21 is the account that Jesus referred to, and it says this. It says, Then the people of Israel set out from Mount Or, taking the road to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people grew impatient with the long journey, and they began to speak against God and Moses. Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die here in the wilderness, they complained. There is nothing to eat here and nothing to drink, and we hate this horrible manna. So the Lord sent poisonous snakes among the people, and many were bitten and died. And the people came to Moses and cried out, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. 
Pray that the Lord will take away the snakes. So Moses prayed for the people. Then the Lord told him, make a replica of the poisonous snake and attach it to a pole. All who are bitten will live if they simply look at it. So Moses made a snake out of bronze and attached it to a pole. Then anyone who was bitten by a snake could look at the bronze snake and be healed. God did not answer their, their prayer. He, they, they prayed, Moses asked the Lord to remove the snakes. Now this is, this is God. This is a moment. This is a snap. This is, in an instant, every snake could have disappeared. Yet he chose to instruct them that there is a way that you will be transformed in the middle of what is there and that could kill you. That, that, that is there, the deadly that, that is there, the poison that is there, there is a way of healing. And it is not just by him snapping his fingers, it is by the action of you looking at what is killing you. See, see, God, He's not just after a snap of the fingers in a moment just saying, hey, this is going to be easy, this is going to be light. There is a weight that the, the human heart must receive and understand that Jesus stepped into. And it's, it's for this reason. Because God's not just after solving the problem of sin. He is after solving the fear that the enemy tries to bring against God's people. So think about that. So, so God has Moses put the very thing that was terrifying them onto a pole. And looking at the very thing that is terrifying them. That is, that, that is, is the, the absolute defining fear in this moment, looking at that. And, and, and we know this today. Many of our, our hospitals and ambulances, you see that on the side. You see that in the logo. And so looking at the thing that is there that, that is terrifying their hearts, God not only deals with the poison, but He deals with the poison of fear. Because when you and I look at what has been sent to kill us, and we look and we see, and we see the sin of, the, the, of our, your life and my life laid upon Him that has no sin, not only is the weight of sin dealt with, but the fear that is used to crush us is removed. And so it's not just a, a, a wonderful, hey, the sin is, is being taken care of. God's after the fear that would fill our hearts. I don't know if you've ever thought about this, but, but really, crucifixion is this midway point in, in human brutality, in, in the, the, the accepted, what was permissible. Um, it really is like the pinnacle of the most horrific way that someone could die human history had not achieved that up to that point. And looking back, you cannot find a more uh, horrific way to die that combined these three elements, humiliation, pain, and ultimate death. Scholars will tell you that, that crucifixion was not a, a short process, it was a long process. And it was a process that, that was extended. There, there are reports that, that some even made it and, and lasted in torturous pain for four days. So this, this is the pinnacle of torture. This is the pinnacle of humiliation. They're in front of everyone. They're stripped bare. And, and I, I want, I want the, the, this, this moment, I, I'm asking the Holy Spirit that He would reveal what, what fear is represented in this moment. Because you, you could not have a greater fear than being captured, being convicted, and being crucified. It's the pinnacle. I, I, I look at it this way, that, that humiliation and the way that, that fear speaks through that speaks today. Fear tries to say, uh, I'm not enough. That I have to, to look a certain way or I have to be a certain someone to, to have the respect and the honor and what my heart needs. And I fear that. 
I, I see people paying the, the heaviest price in this place of confusion, trying to attain what fear is telling them they don't have. They, they, they fear the humiliation. They fear the opinion. They, uh, they fear being on the wrong side of what is currently how you're supposed to be. We see this in the garden. The, the first question that was brought to Adam and Eve, did God really say? It's the, the ultimate first expression of FOMO. Fear of missing out. Are you sure you have everything that you need? I, I, I don't know. And this is multiplied again and again and again in our time. God's after the fear of humiliation. The fear of pain. If this happens, my life is over. I cannot make it if this, this event would happen. Fear speaks through these places. It speaks through, through pain. And, and I want to be careful not to give too much context because I know that God is speaking and the Holy Spirit is revealing places that fear is trying to speak in our hearts. It tries to speak through pain. I, I could never make it if that happened. We have the, these diagnosis and these words of diagnosis that, that it's not the, the, the actual disease that is killing people, but it is the fear of that disease that is fueling that disease. He's after the fear. What, what is the fear that he's after that he wants to remove from your heart today? And then... This last place, this fear of death, it's the unknown, it's the loss of control, it's the ultimate, I don't have a say, I have no control in that moment. Humanity scratches and claws for control. So this fear of the unknown is there. So it, it, this, this, this moment of Jesus being lifted, He's not okay with us passing it by and not stopping and, and not averting our gaze, but looking at Him until the fear comes out of our hearts and the fear that the enemy tries to use against us being removed. You know, we make our worst decisions from fear. I got, it, it happens sometimes even when we drive. I'm afraid to be late. God's after the fear the speaking to our hearts today. What is fear trying to say to you? What is fear trying to push you into decisions for? What, what, what places is fear trying to lead you to? That's what he's after as we look to the cross. I, I see five postures that I want to highlight for us at the cross of Jesus. Five postures. And really, there, there's three that were there that, that are controlled by fear. Three could not stand and continue the gaze at the cross. Three were controlled by fear. The first is the, the crowd. This is his place of mindless activity led by emotion. How many are going to stand before Jesus never stopping and asking, what if it's all true? But led by the confusion in the crowd around them. Ronald Rollheiser has a quote in his book, Sacred Fire. Crowds do not think, they act out of blind energy, and that carries immense dangers. Indeed, scripturally, scholar, scripture scholars tell us in the Gospels, most every time the word crowd is used, one could supply the adjective mindless. The crowd was there, and they didn't even know how they got there. They had been, been worked into a frenzy yelling, crucify Him, crucify Him. And the next thing they knew, they were moved along 
witnessing a crucifixion, many of them saying, wait, is that, is that who we were yelling to be crucified? See, crowds can lead us in places because what, what, what if I stand out? What if I don't say what everybody else says? What if I step into a place where my opinion is different than a crowd? What, what if, what if I, I, would, I would take a stand and say something that would be according to the Word of God and according to Scripture, but very different than what our day and age says is truth? Don't be led by a crowd. Don't let fear push you into a crowd, into this mindless place. The cross demands that we look, and we don't stay in a crowd, but we look, and the cross reaches into our hearts. So the crowd is there. The other posture that I see is the soldiers. And their response to fear is power. Their response is, is, why would I have to fear anything? I, I'm, on the, I'm on the right side. I'm on the powerful side. I, I, I'm in the posture where, where I'm a Roman soldier. Why would I have to worry about anything? Now think about how that shapes our lives and the way that we, we get in places and fear pushes and just says, hey, if you just have enough power and you just have enough control, everything's going to be okay. If you just earn enough, if you just step on enough people and get high enough in the company, everything's going to be okay. That's all you need. You just got to be in a position of authority where you can tell everybody what to do and no one's your boss. The fear will drive you to make the worst decisions, searching for power that's not yours. One of the greatest accounts that we have in Scripture is where Pilate is brought and, and has a little measure of what it is to be standing before a true king. And I, I love the interactions between Pilate and Jesus, and Jesus looking at him and just reminding him, you would have no power unless it had been delegated to you. And yet power is this place that fear will drive us into thinking, if I just have this. The soldiers were there. They had all the power all the authority, yet controlled by fear. Fear is not subject to the authority of the crowd, and fear is not subject to the authority of man's power. Another group that is there is the religious group, the Pharisees. Fear shows its response through them. And, and, and this is the, the place of religion, the idolatry of self. The idolatry of, I know that I am good in myself. That I look at the cross and, and, and I don't need what that offers me because I am good enough in me. I am inherently good and my truth is enough. Man, the cross lays us bare at that place. The Pharisees stood there. and It's very interesting. See, they, they were waiting, and this was such a, the cross was such a victory. And this is how deceived and how obsessed they were with them being on the right side of what they saw Scripture said. And so when Jesus is brought up, they knew that if we can just get Him hung, if we can just get Him hung on this cross, it fulfills the prophecy. He talks about fulfilling prophecy. We're going to show Him what it is to fulfill prophecy. And so their victorious moment was Jesus being hung. Paul says it this way. It says, but Christ rescued us from the curse pronounced by the law. When He was hung on the cross, He took upon Himself the curse for our wrongdoing. For it is written in the Scriptures, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree. They saw that. They didn't realize that He was paying the price for their sin. See, where, where that, that law is found in Scriptures, where they felt so good about it, this is in Deuteronomy, it said, hey, if someone's hung on a, on a tree, that means they've committed a crime that's worthy of death. 
And so if we get them to that place, if someone is put in that place, they said that is like God Himself pronouncing judgment on them. Now think about the truth of that from the different perspectives. Religion says you're there and it shows that I'm right. We look and we say you're there And it shows that I need to be there. And so that that place, fear pushes us to that place. That that It'll lead us to that place of going that that I can be good enough in myself. I I, I know what is true. And and we we live in a day where truth has become this fluid place of confusion. And the Word of God is not confused, it is straightforward, and it is the only answer. And hear me clearly, we we as the church are the moral backbone for every country that we live in. It's not subject, it's not up for any debate. And fear will push us from that place of saying those things. Push, fear will, will, will try to push us from that place, and it is the love of Jesus Christ that demands that with courage we say what is true. And here's the, the truth for each one of our hearts. Fear is not subject to the authority of religion. Fear will not bow to religion. It will not bow to power. And it will not bow to a crowd. The next profile that I, I want to speak about is Mary. Now maybe you, you've seen a, a beautiful painting Uh, of Mary at the cross, and I just want to submit to you, these are not accurate depictions. Most of the paintings that we have of Mary, the mother of Jesus, is that she's collapsed at the foot of the cross. That she's weeping, that she's in this place just broken. The Gospels do not record her as such. They find her standing silent. She is standing in a position of strength. She is not broken. She is not collapsed. She is looking upon what is happening to her son from a place of strength. Silent, standing at the cross, not hysterical, screaming or mirroring the crowd. And what I mean by mirroring is is so many times we get in situations, and and hear me correctly, we get in political worlds, and we, we get in those political realms, and we think they're screaming at us, and so I must scream at them. Mary doesn't mirror that. She stands silent, staring, not averting her gaze for what is happening at the cross. And what is happening is that fear is being removed from her soul. Mary knew it had been spoken to her that there was a moment coming that it would be like a very sword, a sword was piercing your very soul. And she was in it. The worst of the worst was happening. And yet as she stood and she stared and she didn't look away, she discovered that fear is subject to the authority of the cross. The last profile that I want to put in front of us is the profile that, that, that we are defined by, that we live from, and this is Jesus Christ. And this is what fills us. This is the the Spirit of God that is there to fill us. Because not only does He free us from fear, but He fills us with His Spirit. And as we look to the cross and He he, he frees us and He he, he removes the, the hold that fear has on us. Because listen, you have not been created to be ruled by fear, to be led by fear. You have been created to look upon the one that was pierced for you and to live your life with boldness, to live your life with courage, and not to let anything left on the field, but know who you've been called by. You get in these moments, and it's, you know, it's fun. Even I'll share a little, little thing from this morning. So this morning I get up, and I'm preparing for tonight, and I, and I just have a lot on my mind. 
And, and it was one of those, it was hard. I had so much in my mind, it was hard to prepare. And, and, and here's what, what the, the place that the Lord really led me to. I'm sitting there and I'm like, Lord, you got to help me. My mind is full of stuff. And I, gotta pre- I don't know if you know this, but I have to preach tonight. <laughs> like, you told me to do that. And I think you forgot I have to do it on Sunday, too. But here's the reality. I, I have a CEO. I have a leader. I have someone who, who is not passive in the way that he leads and he guides his church. And so because of that, I I don't come to these moments fearful. I close the book. I put it away. So that's enough studying. It's not going to help me anymore anyway. I'm going to go have a great day with my family. You know how I prepared for Good Friday? I took my family to the pool. We got to help the sun. I mean, we live in Florida. We might as well rub it in everybody's noses. <laughs> what I want you to grasp is that you've been created to live by the power of the Holy Spirit of God. Tonight, we look at the cross, and God is going to remove the voice of fear, the effect of fear, as we look upon Him. Because this is the spirit that fills him and fills us. John chapter 18, verse 4 is everything is culminating, and the guards show up with Judas, and, and they're all there. They're rushing in, and Peter's trying to grab his sword, and the disciples are grabbing their things, and they're scared and they're afraid, and they don't know what's happening. I want you to see the posture of Jesus. Verse 4 says, Jesus fully realized all that was going to happen to him, so he stepped forward to meet them. He, he, he didn't step back. Like, like fear came, this is the worst that can happen, and what does he do? He says, well, bring your worst. Bring your worst. I have nothing to fear. There is a covering over my life. I have a covering over my life because I am submitted to the Father. Kyle said it earlier, he over and over, he said, I only do what my Father tells me to do. I only say what my Father says to say. And so his life is covered. He's able not to shrink back in fear, but to step forward and say, I have nothing to fear. This is the Spirit of God filling Jesus, wanting to fill you and I. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us, We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding his shame. Now he is seated at the place of honor beside God's throne. This is our Jesus. So right where you're at, I want to ask you just to bow your heads, close your eyes. just want to repeat, he's after the fear. He's after the fear of the unknown. He's after the fear of what could go wrong. He's after the fear of being alone. He's after the fear of not having enough. He's after the fear of what if the worst happens. So right where you're at, I ask you simply to look, to gaze from the eyes of your heart, gaze upon the cross, see Him on the cross. Take the posture of Mary, looking, 
not fully understanding, but looking and allowing the work that only the cross can do in removing fear from her heart. That's what he wants to do. I want to pray over you, and I, I would simply ask this. If you... If you're here and you, you say, Josh, there, there is this, this fear. God's speaking to me about it. There's this thought, this thing that has driven me, controlled me, spoken to me, and dominated my thoughts. If that is you and you say, Josh, I want to be free of that fear, would you raise your hand? I want to pray over you. Thank you. Thank you. You can put it down as soon as you put it up. I want you to know you are in good company. And the best company is, is that Jesus is here. He's removing the fear. So Lord, right now, we bring our hearts to you. We see you on the cross. Lord, 1 John 4 tells us that that is the picture of perfect love, that he who knew no sin was made sin, that we might become the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. And so we look to you. Right where you're at, I just simply ask you, would you receive God's perfect love? Receive the love that is spoken from the cross. Let your heart just soak it up. Let Him speak to the fear. Let Him remove the fear. Lord, right now we say no to fear. We cast it out by the authority in Jesus' name. We're not going to be led by fear. We're not going to be controlled by fear. We're not going to be made anxious by fear. We cast it out in Jesus' name. And we look to you, the author, the finisher of our faith. Lord, thank you that Good Friday is good. That Good Friday is good because we're not going to turn away from your suffering. We're not going to turn away from what you took upon yourself. We're going to look to you and allow the work that you alone can do into our hearts. Father, we praise you for it. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.